Over the past decade or so, cold brewed coffee has become a phenomenon. You can find it in grocery stores on the shelves, almost every coffee shop sells it. In fact, sometimes they even have it on tap. But contrary to popular belief, cold brewed coffee might be the easiest coffee to make at home. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but you can make it really simply just using a French press. So on today's episode, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how to make cold brew coffee in a French press. But I quickly wanna explain the idea behind cold brew coffee. The way coffee is traditionally made is with hot water. And when you use hot water on ground coffee, the coffee is extracted from the grounds quite quickly. With a French press and 93 degree water, it takes about three minutes. But when you use cold water, the extraction just takes longer, something like 12 to 16 hours. And you might be wondering like why you would do that. Why wouldn't you just cool down the hot coffee? Well, when you do cold brewed coffee, that slow extraction results in a really nice, smooth coffee. It's a totally different tasting coffee to traditionally hot brewed coffee. And a lot of people definitely prefer it if they like things like iced Americanos or an iced latte. And again, it's just so simple to make and you can make it at home. You don't need any fancy equipment, just the French press. So let's get into it. There are two types of cold brew methods. Uh, one is a concentrated method and the other is just normal. I tend to go with a concentrated method and there's a simple reason to that. You get more of it. With a concentrated method, once you've finished brewing your coffee, you might need to add some water or milk to it to dilute it a bit, but you get twice as much coffee in something like this. So an unconcentrated cold brew recipe is about one to 10, one gram of coffee for every 10 grams of water. Whereas a concentrated is double that. So one to five, one gram of coffee for every five grams of water. So that's what we're gonna do. I think we'll do a hundred grams of coffee. Let's turn on the scale, take the plunger out. And actually we obviously need to weigh the coffee before we grind it. So we're gonna use our Congo coffee, which is a really fresh, fruity, raspberry lemon coffee. A little bit of black tea in the tasting notes as well. And we're just gonna grab 100 grams of the good stuff. One thing I'll say about cold brew is it is quite forgiving. Um, traditionally, people would kind of use their old coffee beans and beans that they didn't love as hot brewed coffee. They'd just make them cold brewed because it's such a forgiving way to make coffee. So you can almost make cold brewed coffee with anything. Definitely you do a small sample before you brew a lot of it. We've had certain coffees that came out almost carroty tasting when we cold brewed them. Some coffees come out really fruity or chocolatey or nutty. And just for whatever reason, certain coffees just don't work. So do a smaller sample size before you do a massive amount. Uh, let's grind this up. With cold brewed coffee, you're using a very coarse setting, basically the same as you would use for a French press with hot coffee. So let's grind this up. Okay, so now we're going to put the French press on the scale. We're going to dump in our 100 grams of coffee and we're going to tar it. Now we're gonna add 500 grams, 500 milliliters of cold water. So now I'm just going to pour this in really simply till I hit 500 grams and then I'm gonna give it a stir. I've seen people use the plunger to stir it. I, I wouldn't do that. Sometimes the coffee grinds can pop up the sides. Give it a nice stir. Now it's pretty easy. You just put the plunger in like this. Don't plunge it. Stick it in the fridge just like this. Most cold brew recipes are about 12 hours. This one in particular, I like to let it sit a little bit longer. So we'll come back to it in 16 hours. Um, we'll just let it sit in the fridge. Okay, so it's midday the next day and obviously the coffee shop is open and busy so we can't really film there. We're back in the roastery filming and we'll just show you kind of how to conclude making your cold brew in this French press. It's so simple. Literally, it's been 16 hours, I believe, and you just take your French press and you just give it a nice gentle press. Cool. And then you pour it. Now, there's two ways of pouring it. You can obviously just pour it directly into a decanter or a, a jug or something like that. I actually like to take a second step that's, I wouldn't call it unnecessary, but just overkill. And 
that's using a filter to then filter the cold brew. This is actually the Hario V60 filter. And the reason I do this is because the filter will filter away a lot of the grimy parts of the coffee that are left over, the residue, and it'll just make it even cleaner. That being said, when I'm doing this at home for myself, I don't usually do this. This is an extra step. So we're just gonna pour the coffee from the French press. Normally I would rinse the filter as well, but again, this is for, uh, for YouTube purposes. I think a lot of people that make cold brew at home already will be pretty surprised to see how much coffee residue and stuff like that ends up on the filter at the end of this. So we got this all drained out, more or less. Just let it filter through. Okay, so it's taken a minute to filter through, but I had Neil, the camera guy, shoot a couple of clips of the inside of the filter so you can see how much residue is left on it. I'm gonna take this off and just set it on a plate. <clears throat> and we're left with this much cold brew. This is a concentrate. This is massively strong cold brew. And some people like really, really strong cold brew, but the reality is it's probably twice too strong, if you will meaning that you could now add equal parts water and you have real cold brew. You have a drinkable cold brew. A lot of people like to leave it in concentrate like this because it just doesn't take up as much room in your fridge. You can fill up a small old milk jug or something like that. And when you're ready to drink it, you just pour one part of this and add some water or some ice or milk and get a really nice cold brew. So I tend to opt for the concentrate version for that reason. Also, it becomes a little bit more versatile. You can have a really, really strong cold brew if you just need the jump. Second, you can add milk and have a nice cold brew latte. Or you can just throw it on some ice and add a little bit of water to your liking. It makes it much more versatile. The one thing I will say about cold brew that I don't think a lot of people realize is that cold brew actually has a higher caffeine concentrate than a traditionally poured cup of coffee. So just be conscious of that when you're drinking that. Don't be drinking an entire jug of cold brew like this in one go. You'll be having the heart palpitations like crazy. Now we're gonna show you some more cold brew making methods at some point in the future. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.